Hey guys, welcome back to our series of short little videos where I pass along some of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way of a lot of years of mobile running gun hunting and the last several in a saddle. You know, a lot of people question me when, uh, when they look at saddle hunters, they go, man, that, that looks kind of cool and I can see some benefits, but gosh, there's a lot of ropes involved, right? What I do with those, I, I don't know what, how I would manage all that. And even people who've been saddle hunting for a long, long time sometimes struggle with rope management. What do you do with it? See these questions on the forums all the time. You see somebody hanging there, and they're like, well, what do you do with that tether? How do you do, what do you do with the excess tag in? All that. Today's all about ropes for you guys. Well, hey guys, one of the things I want to do is clarify that this ensemble, this collection of ropes, that I have in front of you actually represents three different systems. So we start off here with what just about everybody starts off with, or at least used to, is traditional 11 millimeter ropes. This is the standard industry offering. It's what everyone up until a few years ago used. And we're gonna show you how to take that and maybe save a lot of space by going to eight millimeter ropes. If you're not familiar with them or if you haven't made that transition yet, we're gonna show you how much space they can save uh, by using eight millimeter ropes. And then lastly, we're gonna work with 40 foot of Canyon CIV rope and 40 foot of Dynaglide. You know, that's what everybody's kind of doing nowadays is one sticking or a lot of people at least are investigating it, right? So, but man, is, is that scary or what? Working with all that rope. So uh, let's get into going from 11 millimeter rope to eight millimeter rope to 40 foot of Canyon CIV and 40 foot of Dynaglide and show you how do you work with all that, how do you take care of it, what do you do with the tag ends, how do you make it easy to walk in and out of the woods, how to hunt with it, let's get to it. Okay guys, what we're gonna do in this video is kind of progress and work our way through the progression that most people make as saddle hunters. Uh, a lot of people start off with 11 millimeter ropes. This is a really super nice offering from Trophy Line. It's part of their covert light kit that you see me wearing here. Um, and, and it's just kind of a base offering for a lot of saddle companies, a lot of saddle kits. It's what a lot of people started off with. I, you know, I started off wearing Predator Samson rope and 11 millimeter and, and made my own tethers and lineman belts back in the day. Uh, again, it's just kind of a, the, the industry standard, right? 11 millimeter rope. A lot of people are familiar with this. Let's show you the difference in this and how it stores versus here in a second, we're gonna show you how much room you can save with the 11 mil millimeter. You can see this is a little harder to stuff in, in this pack. That's why I used, when I ran 11 millimeter ropes, you can get it in here. Trophy line includes this longer dump pouch. Wasn't that big a deal that you can get both 11 millimeter ropes in there. This is a little bit longer pouch. Uh, when I ran 11 millimeter ropes, uh, a lot of those back in the day were running shorter dump pouches, shorter accessory pouches, and I just ran one on my left hip, one on my right hip. I carried my tether in one, my lineman belt in the other, and it just made it real simple. Te uh, Trophy Line gives you this longer dump pouch. You can put both 11 millimeter ropes in here as you just saw, but let's show you what the difference is. And you can see before I pull that out, it is stuffed to the brim, it's stuffed to the gills, right? The two 11 millimeter ropes. And I've mentioned this several, several times on the forums and writing when people PM me. You know, this, this Covert Light kit that I've got on right now, this Covert Light, I added it up last night. This is the 14th saddle that I have personally owned from uh, various manufacturers. I've tried a lot of different saddles. And guys, believe me when I say, nothing made as big a difference in my saddle hunting career from a weight savings, but especially from a bulk savings standpoint, as moving from 11 millimeter ropes to eight millimeter ropes. Now, Trophy Line has eight millimeter ropes as well. Just about every company does nowadays. I was one of the very first few guys who started running eight millimeter ropes with, our, with my setup. And at the time, I was actually working for a company in the industry uh, and I actually personally negotiated the contract with Sterling to bring Oplux into the industry on a, on a large scale consumer basis. So, extremely familiar with the properties of this rope. Been running it for a long time. But you can see, one hand, right? 
And what I want us want to see you do, want you to see me do, is look at the, this is half, half of this. When I say it cuts down the bulk in half, it truly does. I stuffed those 11 millimeter ropes in there. Now I could have probably folded them a little nicer and neater and taken a lot of time, but let's face it, out in the field, you're not doing that. You're stuffing them in your pouch and you're going. I didn't really do anything special with these eight millimeter ropes and there's half the space in there. They only come up to right there, about half of the, of the dump pouch. So they literally cut your space in half, okay? So right there, I just wanted to show you that the difference between 11 millimeter, eight millimeter. Why do I say it is worth it switching that right there? Okay guys, here's where I really wanted to get into. What do you do with the tag ends? What do you do with the excess rope? Because these are the questions I see all the time. It took me, you know, a hunt or two or so to figure it out. And, but literally, I see this all the time. You know, people worry about the tag end. They worry about getting their foot caught up in it, their bow, or just the excess length here, okay? Here's what I did, and let me preface this by saying, you, you put five guys that are saddle hunters with five sets of saddle gear in a room, right? you're gonna get five different methodologies of doing things. It's just the way we are as a community, right? This is just the way that I've discovered that helps me, and I, I hope it helps you take it or leave it, okay? But what I do is I take this long, long tag end of rope here, the excess of my tether, okay? And you'll have more if you're on a smaller tree. I'm on a fairly sizable tree out here in my backyard. But I just take it and I double it over, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is somewhere down close to the end of this stopper knot, I'm going to make just a simple overhand knot and pull it through. Then I'm going to take that, I'm going to unscrew the gate on my carabiner. Even if I'm at 25, 30, 40 foot high, it would not concern me. My weight is holding this, it's not going anywhere. But I'm going to unscrew my carabiner gate, slot, slot, slide it in there and screw it back. That completely gets it out of the way. The nice thing is it also offers a little bit of a redundant stop. So if for some reason, and I've never really been concerned about a mechanical ascender, giving way, failing, I've, I've, I've got a lot of several, several hundred hunts on it, right? And, and never had that concern. But let's just say that for some reason it gives way and you start slipping all the way to that stopper knot. Well, you can see that's a long static fall. That's a long fall before you catch on that stopper knot, okay? If you double it over like I show you, not only are you getting this tether completely out of your way, and you can, there, there's times if, if I'm on a small tree, I will double over this overhand knot. I'll make it really small down here as close as I can to that stopper knot. Now I can actually make a double knot. And if you want to really keep it from dangling, now take that, run it through, screw your carabiner closed. It's not going anywhere, okay? Now the good thing about, let's say my mechanical ascender does fail for some reason. Let's say this spring fails, gives way. I'm going to hold it open. Look at how it's going to catch it. Again, this mechanical ascender is open. It can, it's free to slide as far back as it wants to, but it's going to stop right here. So not only did I accomplish getting the tether out of the way, I provided a really nice safety feature now. Two in one for that little tip. Okay guys, let's wrap up this video on rope management and how do you do with all the excess rope. With my current methodology, what a lot of people are going to, and I see questions in this one as well, is especially on one sticky, right? You got 40 foot of rope, you got 40 foot of rappel line, you got 40 foot of, uh, of Dynaglide, you've got a lineman belt to go around and over limbs, right? That's a lot of stuff to manage. Well, I showed you the figure eight method. So real quick, just if you haven't seen that video, this is exactly what I do with my Dynaglide. 40 foot of Dynaglide takes you literally about 10 seconds to do that. Slip it off your thumb and forefinger, drop it in the bottom of your pouch along with your Madrock and Carabiner or whatever method you use to, uh, to, to repel with. Okay guys, here we have 40 foot of repel line. This is Canyon CID. And so here's exactly how I roll it up and stick it into my pouch, okay? so. It's completely tangle free now. I grab it very similarly to what I'm, what I'm gonna do when I do a figure eight, except for now I'm gonna treat it more like an extension cord. And I basically do it, wrap it over and over and over really quickly over my elbow to forefinger. And you'll see one of the reasons why I went back to nine millimeter, I was running eight millimeter just testing it out. Wasn't gonna advocate it, wasn't gonna promote it because it's out of spec with a Mad Rock. But I've actually went back to it because you can see it coils up really super nicely. And what I do is I just double it up. 
It fits really nicely in any pouch. I actually, this all this year I've been hunting out of a Cruiser XC in preparation for doing a video on it. I kind of want to see how it, how it fits. And I've actually been running one of those little short uh, Amazon dump pouches with the Cruiser XC because it was black and my Cruiser XC was black. I just wanted to match. Okay, sue me. But the 40 foot of Canyon rope fit in there just like it fits in this TX5 bag, okay? Now, what do you do with this? I take my, my Kong, this is my lineman belt that I use to go over and around limbs, okay? So I've got my rappel slash tether rope. Here's my lineman belt. I girth hitch it onto my lineman belt loop. Take this Kong, slide it all the way to the back, all the way to the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fingers, I'm gonna lay it over, create a loop. So all I do is put my fingers there, create a loop around it. Pinch it with my thumb and forefinger. Now I'm gonna reach up through that loop, grab it again, grab this rope, pull it through that previous loop. Keep my fingers here, and at this point I can just keep working it fast and fast. And what this is called, guys, this is called daisy chaining. And this is how I manage my Lyman belt, what I do with it. And this last loop that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run my carabiner through that last loop, that keeps it from coming all undone. Now I can just clip right back into my lineman belt. It's gonna hang by my side. It will not pull undone, guys. I walk through briars and brush and brambles and honeysuckle and really thick stuff. I hunt in a lot of thick, thick, thick stuff. Uh, it's about the only way you're gonna get away from people in the public lands I hunt. So this will not pull out. This is the way I hunt. This is the way I walk into the woods. This is how it stays during my hunt unless I need it. So let me show you what do you do with the 40 foot of rope once you're at hunting height? That'll be a big question for a lot of people. Okay guys, this is probably the single most specific question I get on ropes, especially with one sticking, okay? What do you do with all this rappel line once you get into position and you've reached your hunting height, you're ready to hunt, you've got this huge tag end off. Obviously I wouldn't have that much because I'm just a few feet off the ground, but even if I'm 20, 25 foot up, most of us one stick nowadays with 40 foot of line just because it only adds a couple ounces to your to your weight and if on the off chance that i get into big woods and i'm on the side of a ravine or a hill and i need to go way up to be able to be above the line of sight i want that extra rope for two or three ounces it's just nice security uh just a safety precaution right so but you got all this tag in okay what do you do with it here's exactly what i do with it i bring it up so i start at the very tag end I kind of do the same thing. I lay it between my thumb and forefinger, go over my elbow, back and forth. Same thing you saw me do a while ago. It's going to take about three or four seconds to go all this time. And here again is why I switched back from 8mm to 9mm, because you can see there's no kinks in it. If I was doing that with 8mm Rest Tech or Oplex, you would see a lot more kinks in it, and I would have to take it off and twist it around a couple times to get those kinks out but I've got this link folded over like an extension cord, right? I'm gonna take it and double it up. Then I'm gonna transfer it over to my dump pouch. It goes right back in my dump pouch just like it did before. And then at this point, a lot of times what I, I will do is I will open my carabiner, put that rappel line through there and close it. And sometimes I will even open this one and put it there now it is through here. It looks just like my bridge. It's not flapping. It's not going anywhere. It's not waving in the wind. It, is a, it looks like a part of my bridge. I have no more rope sticking out than anybody, anyone else, even though I've got, probably in this case, 32 foot of rope, at least in the scut pouch, just sitting there waiting to repel down with later on. Okay? This, this is exactly what I do with my ropes. I can walk around. I can do whatever I want to. It's not getting in the way. If I need to let some out, I just pull through here. Let some out a little bit, then feed it back into my into my bag. Okay. Hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you like this, if you appreciate this series, hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.